what's up everyone today we got my first guide on YouTube uh, first I want to apologize for not uploading on YouTube in a while uh, my last video was around Halloween time uh, when the pirate nightmare pack first came out um, so I haven't uploaded a video in a while and that's because I've been streaming um, on Twitch uh, most of the time uh, it's usually where I am now and um, in the description below you guys can uh, get a link to my Twitch check me out there uh, and say hi um, also is the link to my discord um, if you want you guys can join my server um, we do giveaways ask questions answer questions um, get some roles and etc um, but yeah, today I want to talk about uh, this unique build um, for specifically Musketeers. You can also do this for Witch Doctors, but uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, this guy for Musket. Uh, so, what's Shooty Staffy? And essentially, what it is, is it's a type of weapon you would use. Um, so, just checking here. If you, this is my currently equipped weapon, um, in the big yellow letters where it says Ober Nefarious Death, right under it, you can see the type of weapon. So, any weapon that says Shooty Staffy is uh, what this guide refers to. And um, before we talk about what you, what uh, I recommend training and points and gear and pets, um, you have to know that this guide is for PVE. Um, player versus enemy, player versus AI, um, you wouldn't use this in PvP. Um, it's just not the optimal build. You would uh, use pure shooty over pure, over uh, shooty staffy. Um, so just make sure you know that. Um, so yeah. Anyway, before you can talk about what gear you're supposed to use and what weapon, um, you have to make sure that you have the right amount of practice points, essentially. Um, so this guy, I'm assuming that you, whoever's gonna utilize it, is already max level. Um, you can use this when you're not max. Um, some of the gear you, you will be able to use while questing, but um, to optimize this, this setup to its best potential, um, it's best if you're level 70. Um, so, when you check out your practice points here, uh, you can either see it in your powers or your talents. Um, you want to make sure that when you hit the reset button, because I'm guessing you're going to reset to utilize this guide, it says 21. Um, you want it to say 21 practice points. Now, if it happens to say 14, um, that's because you didn't do anything about practice points. So essentially when you're questing, you get a practice point every five levels. And since you go from level one to level 70, you get 14 practice points. How you get the other seven is through these side quests given by a person named Prospector Zeke. There are seven of them, um, and they each give one practice point. Hence why you would have 21 practice points instead of 14. Uh, Prospector Zeke appears in every single world in the game, um, excluding uh, Valencia Part 2. You'll find him, do his quest, um, and basically he'll have you find an item in certain areas in the world. Um, you just find it, you know, put your body over it, and it will collect. And then you turn it into him and you get a practice point. Um, he usually, you know, he might appear in a tavern. Um, he does in a few worlds. And sometimes he'll be um, with a teleporter, or this teleporter guy over there um, will put you, he might be there. And sometimes he's in really, like, like weird areas that you would be like, why is he there? Um, for example, Cool Ranch, he's in, he's in Gold Creek for some reason. Um, but yeah, you essentially want to do his quest, you get more practice points. And practice points, essentially, are what make you great as a pirate, uh, rather than just an average pirate. So, <clears throat> let's talk about what we're supposed to train. So let's head up. Oh, 
to Avery's Court. And we're going to be using all 21 of these points. So you want to make sure you have every single thing that you can train from Old Fisheye um, already acquired. All right. So first thing that you're going to want to do is talk to the secret trainers. And these secret trainers, um, if you don't know about them, which you should, um, but if you don't, they are in Skull Island Skyway. You head there, and you'll head into Corsair's Channel. And essentially from there, you go into Devilfish Hollow. Um, and in the Sharks area of Devilfish Hollow, um, you head to the back, you go all the way to the back, and you'll see a little uh, hatch on the floor. And every hour, there are three secret trainers that cycle out every hour. Um, I believe it goes um, melee, the melee trainer that will train you melee talents and powers, um, to the witch doctor trainer, to the musketeer trainer. Um, those are the three. And you're going to want to train from the Witch Doctor and the uh, Musketeer Trainer. So, at level 20, you will be able to train Burst Fire. Right here, you can see where it says level 20. Um, of course, you're going to have the requirements already from uh, what you train from Old Fisheye, um, because you're a Musketeer. So you'll be able to train it. So when you're level 20, you got a practice point, um, head there, get burst fire, you can do this while questing. Alright, so what you're also going to want to train there is, where is it? Oh, where is it? Here it is. Overwatch. These, um, you will be able to train uh, Overwatch at level 20 as well, at the Secret Trainer, um, as well as... Uh, a second rank of Overwatch at level 40. Um, you're going to need, of course, another two practice points, um, which you'll have already from questing. Um, Alright. Now, that's basically what you're going to want to train from the Musketeer Trainer. You have an option, though, and it's not really recommended. And it's part of the shot, too. Um, from the Musketeer Trainer, the Secret Musketeer Trainer. So, level 20, of course, you get part of the shot here. And then, uh, level 40 is the next part of the shot. Um, this is, a, this is, some people would consider it a useless attack. I have it just because I wanted more talents. You 100% don't need to train this, um, but if you want, you can. Um, it's another two practice points, so just be aware. You know, it's very you know your practice points are very scarce. So that's the musketeer secret trainer, um, which is one down, and now you have the witch doctor secret trainer that you want to see. From the witch doctor secret trainer in Devilfish Hollow, you're gonna want to train. Ready Spell 1, and Ready Spell 2. Um, if you don't know what Ready Spell does, it's basically the same thing as Overwatch, um, but for staffy weapons. And, of course, shooty staffy weapons. That's why it's so great, is you get these extra talents, um, which makes you just that much better. Um, so, Overwatch and Ready would both proc uh, when somebody, when an enemy moves into your range. <clears throat> so you can train these from the Witch Doctor Trainer, the Secret Witch Doctor Trainer, level 20 and level 40. Uh, yet again, uh, we have Coward's Bane. Coward's Bane, you can also train level 20, level 40 from that Secret Trainer. You can get two ranks. Um, and same thing with Pardling Shot. Uh, and it's that it's not needed. You don't need it whatsoever. I have it just because I want more talents. There are other things that you can train over it, but I happen to, I happen to have it. You definitely don't need it. Um, 
Well, somebody forwarded to me. Rip. Anywho. Alright, so that's the secret trainers, essentially. That's what you would train from the Musketeer and the Witch Doctor secret trainer. Alright. So, something that I didn't talk about, which I think is kind of helpful, is what you pick for your Musketeer. Now, obviously, you can't change what you picked at the start when you were creating your Musketeer. Um, you know, if you're already level 70, don't, don't delete your pirate just to get better, um, better traits for when you make your character. I made the mistake of doing that twice. I deleted two masters for that, for that, for, um, a very minor difference. Now, I trained Keen Eyes because, uh, I'm dumb. Uh, it's, it's, this is actually what you don't want to train. Um, hopefully, you trained Naturally Spooky, and you can check it here. Hopefully, you trained, uh, Naturally Spooky, and you would be raised by, uh, you would be raised in Crocotopia. And, uh, that's what you would want it here. Um, and why is that? It's because it increases your spell power. It gives you Naturally Spooky, so it'll increase this. And if you don't know what spell power does, um, anything with this little spell power bottle... Um, it'll increase the damage. So the ta your bombs for musket will essentially do more, and scratch buff will make them do even more. Your heals will do more. If you have an absorb, um, it'll do more. Blood flames, even though it doesn't appear, some things um, it doesn't appear, like for barrels and for flames, it'll actually do more damage, even though the spell power doesn't appear. Gunnery will do more. So that's why it's really good. Um, um, and like, for poisons, if you happen to have a poison, it'll make the poisons do more. And um, this is another thing, it's not necessary. Um, yet again, I messed up on this when I made this musketeer. But it's very minor. And um, I picked to get Gaspard, which you definitely don't want to do. What you would want is this guy. This is the crown shop version um, of Milo Greytail. That's who we would. That's who you'd want to pick is Milo Gray, Milo Greytail. Um, and uh, just because he is the only agility based companion that you can get from the Presidio, um, so he'd be your guy. So that's what you would want. You'd want raised uh, raised in Crop ro raised in Crocotopia for naturally spooky. And you would want to have Milo Greytail as your companion. If you don't, don't stress about it. It just makes it... It just makes uh, your pirate a little bit better. So, anyway. Let's go back to towers. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, and talents. Alright, so... For the Witch Doctor... Before you go into those Witch Doctor trainers, just a, a tip... You wanna you you have prerequisites for it um, to train. Uh, where is it? Ready spell and uh, coward's bane. You need to train staffy weapons too. Now, um, don't don't think that it's bad that you're gonna train staffy weapons too, um, because it's actually good. You would want to train staffy weapons too, even if you're not going to get ready spell or coward's bane. Um, even though you should. Um, because if you see here, Staffy Weapons gives you plus 2, and then Staffy Weapons 2 gives you plus 6, uh, for a total of 8. So that gives you 8 total weapon power if you're using a Staffy Weapon, or a Shooty Staffy Weapon, or anything that has Staffy in it. Same thing with Shooty Weapons, you train this already from your Musketeer Trainer, you get plus 20. So if you're using any sort of shooty weapon, you have that. So this gives you 20 in total, plus your staffy weapons, so plus 8. So that's 28 plus. So essentially, with my weapon, um, it actually doesn't... Essentially, it doesn't do 210 weapon power. It actually does 238 weapon power. So you can kind of think of that. Um, if you're a little bit, like, hesitant on, ooh, it has, has low weapon power at 210. Um, that actually has a good amount because it's hybrid. Alright, so 
there's a few things that you can train from your regular trainers. Um, luckily for Musketeer, when you train from Old Fisheye, you get Elusive 3, which is really nice. Um, and if your pet has Elusive, you can get Elusive 4 on your pet. And then there's also Elusive uh, 5, which you can get if you use the boots. And Elusive 5, as you can see here, plus 100 dodge um, under half health, which is really good. Um, also, you train Quick Draw 3, of course. And you get all these goodies. So, from all these regular trainers, you wouldn't train any uh, talents. You can, but there's a few things. Oh, my bad, I forgot to mention. Um, for the Witch Doctor trainer, the secret Witch Doctor trainer, you're also going to want to train Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter's at level 20, make sure you get this. Um, this is actually a pretty underrated ability, because people, I guess, don't find it useful for some reason. I don't see a lot of people with it. Um, why are people pointing me to me? Um, um, so yeah, you get Witch Doctor, Witch Hunter, uh, rank 1. It's very good. It has a strong multiplier. I think it's 1.3, maybe? Um, plus your, um, whatever your bonus is. Such, so, if you're a musketeer, it would be agility. So that would even add on to it, which is really nice. Um, so, the only um, talent that you would train is from the Witch Doctor right here. You would head in there and you would train, let me get it, let me get it, Spooky 2. Um, like I said before, Spooky 2 is just going to make your bombs, um, your heals, if you have Valor's armor, uh, poisons, all those good stuff, gunnery, big guns, artillery, all of those are going to get boosted um, because of this. So Spooky's a big... Um, big thing, it's very important, it's a very important stat for Musketeer, Witch Doctor, and Privateer. Um, so that's the only uh, talent that you would train um, from any of these regular trainers. However, you would train... Oh, and Light Armor. You can train Light Armor. That, this is true. Um... But powers, however, uh, you can train from these five regular trainers. For example, you get your basic heal, you train it from Privateer, you do the prerequisites, you get Gunnery, and then you get Rouse. Um, that's how it goes. Um, and this is an option if you want. You can also get Valor Shield, um, Gunnery, Rouse, and Valor Shield all from the Privateer trainer, the Commodore. Uh, Valor Shield is optional. Uh, it, you can see it here, prevents 25% damage from attacks. You can get it if you want. I don't find myself using it that much, so eventually I'm actually going to reset my points, and I'm going to get something else. And what I might get is Rough 2, which I don't think you can see it, because, yeah, essentially, I'll show you here. Um, and then I might get Rough, or whatever it is, what Rough 1. Whatever I can train. Um, just to increase, just right here, um, I might decide to train this just for an extra weapon power because one weapon power will do more than a Valor Shield for me in PvE. Now, if you're doing PvP and you, um, as a Musketeer, you would train Valor Shields, but this is for PvE, of course. Alright, <clears throat> so that's essentially what you would train. Basically. Basically. Um, there are certain things that you can train. Conda Troops, I believe, is, uh, requ is that required for you to train? I don't think it is. Uh, no. So, Conda Troops is from my pet. Um, and so is Regroup, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not something that I trained. But, essentially, that's what you would train. So, let's get into the fun stuff, which is gear. This is what will make you actually good. It's a shooty, staffy musketeer. Uh, your talents are one thing, and what you train, and your powers. Um, but you can't have good powers and talents if it's not for your gear. So, of course, my 
whole guy is stitched except for these boots. And I have every piece of gear that I could want for this musketeer except for the boots. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So first, this is what I have. You have options too, and I'm going to go over the alternate options. Santa Rana's hat is what I have right now. Yeah, Santa Rana is a boss. Um, you fight him twice in Cool Ranch. Uh, one in Castillo Sapo in Santa Pollo Skyway. You can get it there. Um, when you fight Santa Rana, he has a uh, he has a loot chest if you want to spend crowns to try to get it. And he also you can also fight him in El Toro's um, house in Santa Pollo uh, to try to get this. So this is what I have right now. What you can do, however, you have you have options, um, and one of them is this Nosha campaign hat gives you plus fourteen agility, quick adjust and true get. You get these extra talents. You're a musketeer, so having them wouldn't be bad whatsoever. This is what I used to use, but I had to adjust accordingly with my pet. Um, this is great, of course. Um, quick adjust if you miss, true grit if you get hit. You can see the descriptions there. Um, always good to have more talents. Um, this is for PvP more than PvE, but if you want a Valor's Armor in PvE, that's totally fine. Having, having at least one is not a bad idea. Um, this is one of the Absorb hats here. Um, Matador's headgear. I got mine from Tyson. There's a bunch of places that you can get it from. Um, it is from Cool Ranch. This one gives plus 10 agility. So that's essentially what it is. Remember, these are these are stitched, so don't these are not what they usually look like. And then there's also the Mercy of Campaign hat that you can uh, get as well. Um, these these two are both from Kane. They both dropped from Kane in Valencia Part Two. This one gives plus 14 agility, increased base agility, and quick adjust. Um, so of course, agility makes you crit more, makes your damage go up. So having more is uh, better than having less. And then you get this extra talent of quick adjust, which you can use. So that's it for hats, essentially. Um, that is what I would heavily recommend for this. Now robe, there's one robe. There's really only one robe that I would use. And I would never change it. And this is what you would really grind to get. And of course, it's the infamous Captain Blood's jacket. You might see it a lot, because a lot of people do have it. It's uh, it's a very, very strong ability. This one is the Obsidian one that you get from Obsidian Blood, but there is also the regular jacket, um, which is very slightly different than this one. It's slightly worse, but it's still amazing. Um, either or, um, it's a very strong um, jacket. And the Blood Flames are still the same. The power there doesn't change, which is, which is the most important part. Uh, Blood Flames, of course, are just broken, essentially, for PvE. Um, they are boosted off of your spell power as well. So when you're using Old Scratch, and you are you have Spooky 2 that you train from the Witch Doctor uh, trainer, um, it will make it do more damage, um, and Scratch just makes it ten times better. Um, now, if you don't have Flames... Um, you essentially would get flames. You, that's what you would really try to get. You could use Moo Jacket, which gives you an extra copy of, of uh, Cannonballs, the Spare Trap, gives you agility, some magic resist. Um, so, I always, always say that stats aren't everything. Um, in some cases, they can really help. Um, even though this gives 13 agility, you know, a bear trap, you're not really going to use that. And Cannonballs is very good to get an extra copy, but it's not Blood Flames. So these are the two robes that you could use. Blood Flames is not essential, but very recommended. Uh, so now to my dreaded boots. Oh boy. My boots aren't what you would want, essentially. Um, right here, I have the Gladiator boots on right now. I'm doing it solely for the stats. Um, and I guess for the hidden, it's nice to have a hidden, but it's solely for the stats. Plus 13 agility, which is nice, of course, accuracy, uh, I can maybe dodge something, and then you get some, 
get some resistance. Um, these are not the ideal boots, and I of course can tell you what the ideal boots are. And they are the infamous Frozen Tide boots. Blood Flames Frozen Tide. Yep. That's what you would use. So, the Imperial boots of Mu Manchu, they are the boots that you would want. Not these, not any of these. These aren't the boots that you would want. Um, tide boots, if you don't know what they are, they freeze every enemy uh, currently alive um, for one turn. And they stay still, they can't do anything. So it essentially gives you an, an extra round to uh, buff with no consequences. That's what, it's, it's broken, just like flame. It's very strong. Um, and that's those are the boots you would use. I've been trying to get them for five years, and I haven't gotten a single pair, so that's just my luck. Um, I also have the Rouse boots. Uh, not the Rouse boots, the Revive boots that give health. You could use these if you want. Um, they're not tied boots, but they're still good. Um, you can use Elusive boots if you have... If you want elusive four or elusive five if you have it on your pet those are also very good they're currently in my bank so you don't have them right now um you have levy call boots these are a plunder drop um from any group chests that uh, that will give you aqua gear um gives you mediocre stats um and the levy call you don't really need this but uh, you could use it if you don't have tie boots and this is just uh, stat boots that i have wouldn't use those. So now, the big thing is the weapon. Um, of course, this build is based off of Shooty Staffy, um, so you would want to use a Shooty Staffy weapon, I would hope. Um, now, I do not always use a Shooty Staffy weapon, and that's for current situations. Current? Si yeah, situations. Uh -oh. Now, right here, uh, this is the best weapon for Shooty Staffy. Um, hard to argue with it. And see over Nefarious Death. Uh, um, it doesn't, of course, look like this. This is stitched to the Krampus Staff and Shooter, which you get from Krampus, which is also a mediocre weapon. It does 210 damage, but it's shooty staffy. Mediocre. Um, but the reason why this is amazing is because it gives double tap. Uh, for Musketeer, it of course is agility based, which is what we like. That's what we like to see. It doesn't have a lot of range. But it makes for it. it makes up for it, um, and I'm going to talk about why uh, it having double tap is so amazing. But these are the weapons you would use. Um, these are the wep This is the weapon you would use. Um, if you don't have it, get it. You get it from the Armada pack, the Ashes of the Armada pack. Um, they they basically give you a weapon every time you open a pack. So. I believe there's 11 weapons, so you have a good chance of getting them if you spend a little bit of crowns. Um, if you don't have them, um, which you, uh, which if you don't have these, um, this you could say is the next is the next best thing, and it's staff of power. It's shooty staffy. Um, of course, you get this from the final fight in Mu Manchu. You have to be on your musketeer to get this weapon. You have to do the fight on your musketeer to get this weapon. It has an extra range, less damage, and it gives you this really cool ability of uh, first fire. Everybody, everybody, um, that's uh, your allies, essentially gets first fire for three turns. And you get bonus agility. Um, it's a very cool looking weapon. Sadly, you can't stitch it, which I'm sad about. Um, which, but yeah, this would be the next best thing. And then you have, uh, these are all pure shooty, so they don't have anything to do with it. Fool's Wand you could use if you want range, if you need range for anything. But for this build, you would use Orb of Nefarious Death. Alright, on to the eye patch. Uh, there's two eye patches that you would use, maybe three. And in the best option, in my opinion, is this eye patch, the patch of St. Fido. It's purely stats. Which I know some people don't like, but it's 11 weapon power, 14 accuracy, really good, um, highest weapon power. I mean, this is the best stats eye patch, essentially. This is what you would use, and um, you get it from the crown shop. It costs 2,750 crowns, um, pretty pricey for an eye patch, but 
um, to get the job done, really. If you don't have this, you can go to the black market and get the... There are two eye patches that you can get from the black market. And there's the eye patch that gives you... Um, and it increases your spell power, not your spell power, yeah, yeah, your spell power, which I don't know if I have, if I can show that, uh, can I show that? I don't think I have anything on me right now that does that. Uh, anyway, yeah, here it is. It gives you Mojo Mastery. So this little bottle right here, um, there would be one of that on this eye patch. You get it from the black market in the Skull Islands, um, in the back of the bazaar. So you just head to the Skull Island Bazaar. Um, it costs Scrip, um, so make sure you got Scrip to get it. If you don't want to spend crowns, um, you would get the Mojo Mastery Eye Patch, um, which of course increases your spell power, and you know how much spell power, how good spell power is. So if you even don't want to do that, you can also get the Weapon Mastery Eye Patch. This is not this, but your Eye Patch would have Weapon Mastery. And you would use that, it would increase your weapon power, um, and you have that. You could also use that, I recommend Patch of St. Fido the best, um, over anything else. On to the totem. Now I know you probably say, you're probably saying, why the heck don't, doesn't he have first quiver? Uh, um, and that's because I don't need it. I have the totem here from the Dutchman in Skull Island in Perdition's Cauldron. You can farm him. Very super easy to farm. He respawns as soon as you kill him. Um, so he's very easy to farm. I have the Sniper Shot one and the Weapon Mastery one. Um, you can use that or you can use the Mojo Mastery one. Either one of these two are amazing. You can use them hand in hand. Really um, doesn't matter. They're both amazing as long as you use one of them. If you really don't have them, which you should because they're very easy to get, there's Jewel of Moon Manchu, you get a, uh, an extra copy of Cannonballs, Accuracy, and uh, a Super Strike. You could also use this if you'd like. I like uh, I like the Dutchman Totem a little bit more. You have that, and this is just pure stats you can get from Kane if you want to use just pure stats. And on to the charm. More pure stats. Um, this is essentially the best charm in the game for PvE. Um, you want the plus 14 agility one. You get this from Obsidian Brass, um, which is the skeleton key boss in um, Scrimshaw. You farm it until you get the agility one. And what I mean by the agility one is the one that gives you plus 14 agility that you see here. Gives you plus 10 accuracy and plus 5 weapon power plus the other stats. So it's just amazing. Makes your stats amazing. Makes you strong. And then Bristiani Signet, your ring. Um, this is what I use. Um, you could use a, a few rings. Uh, this is for this is from Kane. It gives me quick adjust and increased base agility, and it gives you a bunch of accuracy. So that's really nice. Um, this I have our artillery ring. You wouldn't use this. There's a big guns ring. That you could use big guns ring is of course very situational and it's a uh, good power um you would mostly use it for maybe the generator fight the second fight in kane if you need to hit the back one uh, and you want to get it done in one round and there's also bresciani band also from kane that gives you true grit and increased based agility just depends on what power what uh, talent you want true grit or quick adjust um all right and finally we get into the pet Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Alright, we're back. <laughs> um, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to edit that out or not. <clears throat> the logical answer is yes, edit that out. But of course, me being me, why the heck would I edit that out? So anyway. <laughs> um, pets. <laughs> Final thing is pets. Um, now, essentially you don't need a pet. Um, you honestly don't need a pet to be good in this game. But having a good pet makes you from being a good pirate, mediocre pirate, to uh, a great one. 
Uh, so, this is my pet. Um, if you guys ever want to morph with me, I'm totally fine with that. Um, find any of my pirates. Um, my Musketeer Logan, my Swashbuckler, Strong Logan Hopkins, my Witch Doctor, Golden Logan, my Privateer, Silver Logan. Uh, my missing a class. My Buccaneer, <laughs> uh, Salty Logan. So, any of those guys, if you see me, you can morph with any of my pets, ask. Uh, and I totally will. But, anyway. Um, so this is the pet that I currently use. It gives me con the troops, which I don't need. Uh, it's kind of nice, kind of not. Regroup, which is really good. Spell power base. Heal, of course. Uh, it's a group heal. You can't argue with that. And then it gives, this pet gives me Burst Fire, Double Tap, Mojo Rising, and Mojo Echo. And what's so great about Shooty Staffy Musketeers is that you can do so much, so much difference. There's so much difference with pets and what you can do. Um, so, uh, this pet I'm using right now um, is because of mainly one thing, and that's Double Tap. It grants me Double Tap. As a Musketeer, you train Double Tap 3. Um, and, of course, your weapon gives you double tap 4, and then you have it on your pet, which gives you double tap rank 5. Why is double tap rank 5 so good? Well, any 5 rank of anything is pretty good. If you see here, um, anything blue means it's granted from a piece of gear or pet. And here it is right here. This is double tap 5. You can see the differences... Double tap 4, and then double tap 5. You get that little fist right here. Increased damage per hit. Every single time you're double tap procs, it increases your weapon power. Uh, which is really good. You can start to hit heavy chains. Um, when you start chaining, you're going to do a lot more. Um, essentially, when I have all double taps procs, um, and I got all the boost from them... Um, a super a super hit for burst fire can do maybe like 1,200 damage, just because of that. Um, so really broken ability, just like Blade Five, just like Blade Storm Five for Buccaneers, which um, is all, of course also amazing. You have double tap five, which is really good. Um, also, your pet gives you burst fire, which you would definitely want. You would want your pet to give you burst fire, so you don't have to use. The Quiver, which is a totem that gives you Burst Fire and some pretty good stats. From Aquila, you farm Paris, from Troy, and Ilios, and uh, you would do that fight and try to get Burst Fire Quiver if you don't have it on your pet. Now, you could use both for uh, Burst Fire 3. Uh, essentially, you don't need Burst Fire 3. You really don't. Um, it just does that. Oh, my bad. It, it increases this by a little bit. Um, it increases your crit chance, which is... Mm, oh, my bad. It uh, increases the chance to activate. So, it's really not needed. Burst Fire 3, Burst Fire 2 uh, is all you need. Um, and your, if your pet gives it to you, amazing. Also, it gives me Mojo Echo and Mojo Rising. These are two Witch Doctor abilities... Um, that are procced from staffy weapons. So essentially, these are an extra two attacks. So your double attack and proc, your double tap can proc three times. Burst fire procs two times. Uh, Mojo procs once, and then Mojo, Mojo Echo procs once, and then Mojo Rising procs once. So uh, you just have a lot of attacks, a lot of chains, and that's basically what PVE is about. And my pet also gives Overwatch. Oh my, not my pet. My bad. My my hat gives Overwatch right here, which will give me Overwatch 3. Um, and if you don't know why Overwatch 3 is amazing, you can see the difference here from Overwatch 2. Of course, Overwatch 2 makes Overwatch proc um, 2 times, maybe 3. And then Overwatch 3, you can see that little uh, red arrow. Um, when somebody gets hit by Overwatch, their accuracy goes down by 50%, which is really good. If your pet has readied spell, if your pet has readied spell like here, readied spell, it would give you readied spell 3, and readied spell 3 does the exact same thing, decreases their accuracy by 
And if your pet, if you are lucky enough to get a pet that gives ready spell and overwatch, right, like this one, it'll give you overwatch 3 and, um, and ready spell 3. You don't have to use the Santa Rana hat like I'm using. You don't have to use this hat if your pet gives it to you for overwatch 3, um, which is the nice thing about it. And you'll have double reduce. Plus, if it has double tap, it, you'll, it'll be double reduce, double tap 5. Which is really good. Um, and um, if you can get double reduce, I mean, decreasing somebody's accuracy by 100% is just amazing. Plus, you'll have double tap 5. So, the variety of pets is really... Uh, what, what, you, what you want in your pet is up to you. And, um, just go off what I said, if you can get Burst Fire, Double Tap, Overwatch, Ready Spell, Mojo Echo, Mojo Rising, um, if you can get those on your pet, that'd be amazing. Um, your powers, if you can get a Heal, a Cloud Spirit, um, Elusive, if you want to get Elusive 5. But that's really it, um, this was a very in-depth guide for Shooty Staffy. Um, I know it's sloppy, um, I'm too lazy to edit, so, <laughs> um, deal with it, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys learn from this, I uh, hope you guys use it, uh, just in case you wanted to see the stats with what I have, 321 weapon power, 105 agility, 199 accuracy, this all changes with, uh, slight changes in your gear, of course, and, uh, spell power there, uh, so this is what you guys use. Alright guys, uh, that's basically it for now, um, uh, make sure you guys join the, my Twitch, uh, where I'll mostly be 99% of the time, um, and my Discord server, I'll tell you when I'm going live, when I'm making another video, uh, what have you. Alright, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out!